Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gresham College for this uh, symposium. Um, we're delighted to, to see you here, and uh, it's, we have a very uh, packed day, but one which I think is an appropriate um, mark of the importance of Grant and of demography and all the other things that sprang from his work. I'm going to begin um, by just saying a few brief things about Gresham College and its relevance to the subject of today's symposium and then hand over to Jane. And I'm going to chair the morning session because that's more historical, which is my area. Jane is going to chair the afternoon session, which is, um, brings it up to date. Um, for those of you who don't know where you are, uh, this is the headquarters of Gresham College, which was founded by Sir Thomas Gresham, um, or under the will of Sir Thomas Gresham in 1597, um, to provide free public lectures to the citizens of London. Gresham, like some of the 17th century successors whom we'll be talking about today, was um, a creature of the Renaissance, of the uh, um, European explosion of knowledge, uh, and took a rather unusual, very unusual course in promoting it. Um, he was very rich as a mercer, a merchant, the royal agent in Antwerp, and instead of emulating some of his contemporaries by founding Oxford and Cambridge colleges to educate the elite, he uh, founded Gresham College to educate all the citizens of London um, by the provision, as I said, of free public lectures in what was essentially the whole field of human knowledge from divinity and law and rhetoric to astronomy, music, physics and geometry. And we've added commerce later on. And essentially, Gresham College has been providing free public lectures for ever since. Uh, there have been some vicissitudes, as with the rest of English higher education, um, particularly in the 18th century, but the lecture program has continued and indeed recently is burgeoned, uh, not only in terms of numbers of lectures, we now have over 150 a year, but in terms of attendance and an attendance of over 150 on average at each of our lectures, many of which now take place because of space constraints at the Museum of London. Um, and, but particularly in the last two or three years, a very substantial expansion of web access. 1.1 million lectures were downloaded last year, and I think we anticipate that will go up uh, at a rapid rate. And today's symposium will be recorded and will be available on the web um, in due course. So um, uh, I hope that will be, um, therefore, provide again a worldwide audience, which I'm sure Sir Thomas Gresham would have wanted. Um, the relevance of Gresham to John Graunt is that um, it is, in fact, uh, 352 years ago, yesterday, that the Royal Society was founded at Gresham College. It's recorded that after a lecture by Christopher Wren, who was then Gresham Professor of, of Astronomy, yeah. um, he could equally possibly have been Gresham Professor of several other things as well, but he was Professor of Astronomy. Um, and after a lecture at Gresham College, he and a group of friends met and essentially founded the Royal Society. Um, and, of course, Graunt's paper was given in that context about 18 months later. Uh, so that's the, and those are the anniversaries, in a sense, that we're celebrating today. And um, I think this is an appropriate place to do it because this hall, although not the original Gresham College, was here at the time. It was an inn of court at the time. The original Gresham College was in a huge house built by Sir Thomas um, near what is now Liverpool Street Station in Bishopsgate, uh, which was 
again through one of the vicissitudes of the college handed over to the Inland Revenue by the City Corporation in the middle of the 18th century. So we no longer have that enormous building. We have this rather small building, but I think a very pleasant building, and I hope it'll be a nice venue for the um, symposium today. So welcome again to Gresham, and I'm now going to hand over to Jane for a moment. Thank you very much. I'm Professor Jane Falkingham. I'm the director of the Economic and Social Research Council Centre for Population Change, which is based at the University of Southampton. Um, it's a real honour to be here today to welcome you on behalf of Gresham Centre for Population Change, but also British Society of Population Studies. I'm delighted to see so many members of BSPS in the audience, including our current president, Ludie Simpson. Thank you, Ludie, for supporting today and also past presidents. I can see many in the audience. It's a real pleasure. And also the Oxford Institute for Social Policy. Um, Stuart Bastian, who's a research fellow at the Oxford Institute, has been behind much of today's organisation, and we thank Stuart very much for that. I can't actually see Stuart. He's stuck on the train. He's stuck on the train. Okay, well, um, Today's talk has its um, roots, really, in a, a conversation that I started two years ago with another person who's stuck on the train, a professor at Jim Vopel. Jim was giving a seminar last night at Nuffield College in Oxford. Um, the Centre for Population Change is a, a member of a group called Population Europe that Professor Jim Vopel established two or three years ago to bring together all the centres of excellence in demography across Europe. And um, Jim mentioned over dinner in, in Paris that it was coming up for the 350th anniversary of um, John Grant. And he said every year on, on the day of the Bills of Mortality, he opens a bottle of champagne to celebrate the birth of, of demography. But for the 350th anniversary, he really wanted to open a, a very special bottle of champagne. I can tell this story because he's not here yet. And he'd already kind of spied out the land to think about which one he would, would purchase. So um, he said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to do that actually in London? So as the director of the Centre for Population Change, I felt it was incumbent upon me to make that happen. And so uh, from that moment on, we then started discussions with Gresham and with BSPS about organising today's event so we could actually mark uh, what we as, as in the UK see as the birth of demography 350 years ago. And we have a really exciting and stellar cast, I think, uh, looking at trends in mortality, both, as we said, from a historical perspective this morning and then moving on this afternoon to think about what these changes in life expectancy that we've been seeing, particularly over the last 100 years or so, mean moving into the future. So we're looking at uh, mortality in the past, the present, and then a little look into the future. But I hope that everybody's going to really enjoy today. And um, I just want to say thank you to, to Gresham for hosting us. I also want to thank um, the Faculty and Institute of Actuaries who have loaned us some artifacts. Um, and I hope that during the day you actually get to have a look in that cabinet over there. There are actually some um, really interesting artifacts, uh, courtesy of the Institute and Faculty of Actu Actuaries Library at Staple Inn, and I think the display will be here until around six o'clock, so you don't all have to rush up. But uh, it's very interesting, and I, I was struck when I was looking into the cabinet that um, one of my interests in demography was inspired by a lecture when I was uh, at the London School of Economics becoming a demographer, and uh, I think it was Chris Wilson who had an overhead in one of his lectures, which was a, um, a reproduction of the bills of mortality and talked about people dying of teeth and dying of being bitten by a dog. Well, you can actually see some of those examples. Uh, so hopefully you'll come up during lunch and, and during the coffee break. But just to say welcome and thank you very much.